There were two unique things about the 1966 TT races. They were held in late August, early September due to the shipping strike in June, and the 17 competitors in Friday morning's three-lap 50cc race had a massed start. Crane, seven miles out, Hugh Anderson on his two-stroke Suzuki twin just led the four-stroke Honda twins of world champion Ralph Bryans and last year's winner Luigi Taveri. But as he started his last lap, Bryans led Taveri by 24 seconds having shattered the lap record by nearly five and a half miles an hour at an incredible 86.5. And as Anderson went into his third lap, he was one and a half minutes behind Taveri. Bryans went on to win his first TT. And Brian's win at a record average of 85.6, with Taveri second and Anderson third, gave Honda two wins in five years against Suzuki's three. But with every respect, the 50cc event was a curtain raiser to the afternoon's senior TT. Now, it's no exaggeration to say that in recent years, the seniors' glamour's been a bit faded with, usually, one MV4 easily outpacing the panting British singles behind it. But not this year. For ex-MV world champion Mike Harewood was to ride a 150 miles an hour 500cc Honda 4. And against Mike was his brilliant ex-teammate Giacomo Agostini on a brand new 490cc three-cylinder MV, which was just as quick as the Honda and handled better. Add Derek Minter on a much modified Gilera 4, two of the fast and sturdy 440cc Jawas, several new Matisses, a new Sealy Matchless, and the usual supporting cast of Norton and Matchless singles, and it's easy to see why the senior was very much the race of the week. Two entirely new sounds then, and the very welcome return of one we'd not heard in the island since 1963. Here they are. First, the Gilera 4. Now, the MV3. And here's the big Honda. Thanks to the late date, the World Championship position was really exciting. For with only two rounds to go, the TT and Monza, Agostini was leading Halewood by ten points. Mike had won four of the last five senior TTs, but he had to win this one too to keep his World Championship hopes alive. Now, Agostini had won Wednesday's junior TT, the first Continental ever to do so, and had done a practice lap at 102.3 on the big MV. A staggering achievement, for this was only his second year in the island. Giacomo had mastered the complex 37 and 3 quarter mile TT course incredibly quickly, so I asked him how he'd set about learning it. Ago told me, and Air Mackey works rider Alberto Pagani supplied the translation. Beh, all'inizio ho cominciato con una moto, una moto da, da turismo, e poi ho cominciato a girare in macchina e, e con una cartina me lo studiavo la sera. 
Well, I just start to learn the circuit. First with a standard motorbike, and uh, after in a car, and after with a little map in a room in Avery. And all that studying had obviously produced results. But against Agostini's fastest practice lap at 102.3, Hale would have done one at 106.3. I suggested to Mike that he had done this deliberately to put Agostini off. Uh, you can't put a Lego off. He, he never stops trying. He's, you can't demoralise him too much. He always comes back with a bang, unfortunately. How does the 500 Honda go? You've been riding the MV for mm. four years now. How does the, the big Honda compare with it? It's miles an hour faster. It's, it's just like riding a rocket, you know, but it uh, doesn't handle too well. But, you know, like I said, it's so fast it makes up for what it, how it doesn't handle. There are varying stories about the troubles you've had with it this year. One school says that uh, the brakes haven't been so good, so you've had to use the gearbox more than you would have, and the others say that the gearbox isn't so good, which would be true, or are neither of them? Uh, well, they're both true, really. Uh, most of the year we've had gearbox trouble and brake trouble, uh, but I don't think one complements the other. But um, they've now got a new gearbox in it, and uh, we hope it's going to be reliable. But they've also got new brakes as well. With his incredible record of TT successes, Halewood was obviously the man to watch. And amongst the many who had no doubts about his superiority was Derek Minter. Mike is in superb form. I watched him the other day when I was walking around Scullo's Corner on the 250 when he'd done this 104 mile an hour lap. And he got into such a tank slap and he didn't take a slightest bit of notice. And all he'd done was just looked over the screen and saw me walking down the road. And I thought, by gee, if he can do that and lap at 104, well, that's it, I shan't see him in the 500. But if all eyes were on Mike Hellwood, the same eyes were also on Giacomo Agostini, for he was in terrific form, and his new MV3 was clearly far better than the old four. I asked Ago if it was true that he had persuaded Count Augusta to make it specially for him. Beh, insomma, abbiamo deciso assieme, di che abbiamo deciso assieme perché perché abbiamo visto che con la quattro cilindri no, non c'era più niente da fare perché una macchina, una macchina troppo, ecco, una macchina mai superata. No, just uh, boss mm. in, in Domenico Augusta, I think that forse in was uh, too old for compared with Honda. Everybody was looking forward eagerly to the return of the modified Gilera. But on the very last practice session, Derek Minter, who'd been trying valiantly to sort out handling problems, dropped it at Brandish Corner broke his starter. But two very interesting new British machines were starting. Paul Dunstall's beautifully finished Matisse Domi Racer Twin was to be ridden by Griff Jenkins. But as Paul told me, it had been a big headache in practice. Paul had a lot of trouble with the new engine, which was specially built for over here. A lot of seizure trouble, which I've now traced down to the barrel being machined out of alignment. Uh, this was the whole trouble throughout the time that we've seized about three times with this same thing. This we now should have cured. How? Oh. Well, we've fitted a new barrel, a different barrel. Um, we've modified the crankshaft slightly, or I have, and now it should be OK. That gives you an idea of the problems some entrants have to overcome. But how did 1963 senior Manx Grand Prix winner, Griff Jenkins, like the Matisse Domi racer, compared with the Nortons and AJSs he was used to? For this type of circuit, it's a lot better on short circuits, uh, you can't scratch with it nearly as easy. It's just not a floppy type of bike where you can really scratch. It's a little bit of a handicap, but round here it's really exceptionally good. And you've got a disc brake on the big one. Are you going to race that? Yeah, they're not quite as good initially for stopping going into a corner, but they don't fade. This is the big thing. I mean, you can go right away round and finish the race with the same brake in. The other new British bike was the Sealy Matchless jointly designed and built by sidecar racers Colin Seeley and Wally Rawlings. It was to be ridden by the outstanding newcomer John Blanchard, who had put up the sixth fastest senior practice lap. Since this was only to be John's fourth race on the TT course, I asked him if he yet felt completely relaxed on it. No, the first couple of laps worry me. You know, I uh, keep telling myself to take it easy, take it easy, take it easy, and, you know, getting so used to the short circuit stuff, you keep... You have to go hard from the word go, you know, and it takes me a long time to talk myself into taking it steady. <laughs> now, what about the 500? Do you find that a bit of a fire engine after that? Yeah, yeah. It's my first year on the 500, you know, but I've done 96, and I've only done half a dozen practice laps. Racing conditions are ideal. 
Now, with Agostini's NB warming up, the 80 starters from 17 countries, including men of the calibre of Mike Duff, Joe Dunphy, Chris Conn, Jack Ahern, Peter Williams and Malcolm Uphill, are ready to set off on their six laps at 10 second intervals. Halewood starts first with Joe Dunphy, and Mike's going at a fantastic pace, for at Kirk Michael, 14 miles out, he's way ahead. Then it's Agostini who's already caught and passed Dunphy, Stasny, Duff and Griffiths. Now Jack Ahern's Norton in sixth place. But Griff Jenkins is in trouble with the Domi racer. For he's with Ian Burns North, which started 30 seconds after him. Up and over the mountain, Halewood's really pressed on. For here's the Honda at Craig Nabar already. Agostini's hanging on to Mike magnificently. After 35 miles, he's only six seconds down on corrected time. What's this? Third on corrected time, Peter Williams on his Tom Arter matchless in his first senior TT. Here he is rounding the crepe with Uphill's Norton and the matchlesses of Findlay and Croxford. The second fastest standing start lap ever. Halewood leads Agostini by a mere six seconds at 105.8. And what about Agostini's standing start lap at 105.3 in only his second senior TT? Magnificent! And only 16 seconds separate Williams, Uphill and Blanchard in the next three places. Jack Ahern retires at the top of Bray Hill. So now on lap two, Chris Conn's Norton's on the leaderboard, and moving up, for poor Peter Williams loses three minutes at Quarter Bridge, fixing a loose plug terminal. At Kirk Michael, Malcolm Uphill, last year's double Manx Grand Prix winner's third, and right with him in a brilliant fourth place in his first senior TT, John Blanchard. Signpost corner, lap two and the incredible Giacomo Agostini is going faster than ever to lap at 106.7 and break Halewood's 1963 lap record. A stupendous achievement. Stasny's moving up on the 440 Jawa in spite of a blinding headache after a practice crash. Sixth at signpost corner. But Mike the bike's reaching heights even he's never reached before. A new lap record at 107.1 to increase his lead over Agostini to 11 seconds. 
Here's the Honda starting the quickest lap ever done in the islands, hurtling over Belig Bridge and rounding signpost corner. distance, Halewood still only leading Agostini by 20 seconds, at a record average of 106.5, faster than the previous lap record, as they both stop to refuel almost alongside each other. Mike's stop, 35 seconds. Agostini's just two-fifths of a second longer, and now he's getting away. Con and Stasny come into the pits together. And now we get the news that third place man Uphill's retired at the Highland. So John Blanchard's third, Con fourth, Stasny fifth, and Ron Chandler's matchless sixth. And away goes Con's Norton for another three laps. Blanchard's away after an agonizingly long pit stop to fill a small tank. And that's lost him a lot of time to Chris Cole. <laughs> Lap four and Agostini's dropping back. His front brake adjustment's gone and at Bala Crane he's now over half a minute behind Halewood. But still averaging over 105. way round the fourth lap, Mike Halewood increases his lead. Bala Crane, 24 seconds. Ramsey, 30 seconds. And at Craig Nabar, he's 40 seconds ahead of Agostini's MV. Into lap six, the last lap, goes Halewood leading by nearly two minutes now, in spite of being slowed on lap five by rain and wet roads all the way from Balaf to Ramsey. <laughs> then Agostini, settling for second, his average down to 102.3, but a magnificent ride. For now, he's not only slowed by his brake trouble, but remembering that last year he came off in the wet and had to retire. <laughs> Con's up to third now, but John Blanchard's holding his fourth place as he thunders past the grandstand for the last time, right alongside Ron Chandler's matchless in sixth place. And here's a sensation. Peter Williams is back in the hunt. After that three-minute stop when he was third on lap two, he's gained place after place, and now he's up to ninth as he starts lap six and destined to finish a brilliant seventh. On to Bala Crane to take Chris Conn through. Third in Wednesday's junior TT, and now third again. A very well-deserved reward for six years of effort in the island. 
And then that tough old campaigner Frank Stastny, now down to sixth on his Jawa behind Chandler's matchless. But it's Halewood's race. His ninth TT win in six years and his fifth senior victory to create more TT history by topping the Stanley Woods and John Surtees previous record of four wins each. But in its way, just as brilliant as Halewood's ride was that of Agostini, who, as he comes in to finish second, definitely shares with Mike the title of top TT rider of 1966.